Jan Czochralski was one of those geniuses who in first half of 20th century formed basis for today civilization really. The decision of the international chapter of Jan Czochralski award that I will receive the 2013 award is for me of great importance. This recognition of the value of my research for material science is for me a great honor and gives me great satisfaction. For me personally, the importance of the award related to the name of Czochralski is also connected with his activity for Poland during the time he was professor of Warsaw University of Technology. He belonged to a group which I can only describe as the elite of the elite. By his words and by his deeds, he contributed to the successful development of Poland after its rebirth in 1918. This slide shows citations from the Paweł Tomaszewski recent book showing how important was the work in Warsaw for Czochralski. Jan Czochralski was famous and so he was frequently invited to cooperate with other scientists. Yet it was only the proposal to come to Warsaw permanently put forward by President of Poland, Professor Ignacy Mościcki, that he accepted. So that's the first citation, and then there, there are his own words. I arrived in Poland in order to work for the Polish state, in order to dedicate the rest of my life, strengths, and capacities to Poland. I was not expecting any benefits. Uh, these are uh, very important words, and uh, that's uh, really a great honor to, to have the medal related to such person. Um, Since uh, my, professor, my professional activity was always connected with high pressure, it was Institute of High Pressure Physics, uh, with people with whom I have worked there for all my life, I will start my talk with brief presentation of the concept of the Institute. Then I will shortly talk about gallium nitride as a new semiconductor and the importance of the high pressure grown gallium nitride single crystals. And the third point, these are quite recent results. Uh, the, we were studying uh, properties of gallium nitride melting, uh, at melting, and we got the results which were for us so unexpected that I called this point the mystery. That's the, uh, uh, that's the result really of, uh, quite, quite recent result of our work. Um, the history of our institute, history of Unipress, is already quite long. Uh, the roots of this uh, institute are connected with Professor Sosnowski, who in 1960 created the laboratory of high pressure semiconductor research in the Institute of Physics, Polish Academy of Sciences. And this was really the beginning of high pressure physics in Poland. In 1972, uh, this laboratory was uh, got independence. We were uh, we uh, we were separated from the Institute of Physics, and uh, the first plan was that we will apply these methods, which were developed 
for semiconductor, for other materials. But at the same time, there was two other very important strategic de decision taken, which really formed development of the Institute for a long time. First was the principle of balance between the fundamental research and applied research. The other one was the decision about devote very important effort to develop new high pressure laboratory equipment and new high pressure methods of doing research. These two things are for our, for our history are, are really extremely important. Then uh, in 2004, the Institute of High Pressure Physics of Polish Academy of Science was created. That's our first site, which we had at this time. Uh, the Institute today, uh, you have seen already this, uh, these pictures. We have these three buildings. Uh, we do research in four areas physics of semiconductors, quantum structures and devices, nanomaterials, biomaterials, and high pressure equipment, and how, how pressure experimental uh, techniques and equipment. Uh, we have a, about 100 scientists, and the mission of the, uh, of the institute is, uh, is shown here the research in the field of high pressure physics and material science leading to commercial applications. In the Institute, we are able to recreate conditions, the pressure, which in the Earth is at the about 100 kilometers. It's about 20 gigapascals and at these conditions, we are able to study properties of materials and we also are able to perform technological processes which lead to, to applications, to lead, lead to new materials. Uh, this slide shows the uh, list of materials which are studied now, semiconductor, glass and ceramics, metal, biological materials. And this is a list of technology which allow us to, to form new materials and uh, change properties of, of materials which are, which are um, subjected to high pressure technology. Uh, crystallization, sintering, plastic deformation and high pressure annealing. Here there are some examples of, of uh, uh, materials which have been created by these technologies. Uh, here you have the gallium nitride substrates, ceramics, that's the cross section of the nano metal. Um, we also use it for food processing. We study proteins under pressure and it, this picture shows the changes which can be changes in the structure which can be caused by pressure. This slide you have seen already. These are uh, spin-offs. I will not talk about it. High technology spin-offs which are based on technology developed in, in our institute. Uh, however, I would like to attract your attention to this company, to this last company, Top Gun, uh, who commercializes technologies related to to gallium nitride and uh, also uh, they make ga gallium nitride based lasers. And I will try to show these results which really, which really allowed for creation of this company. Gallium nitride, it's rather a new semiconductor. It's in the, in the, uh, in, industrial application only for last 15 years. However, it develops, applications develop very quickly. And if you look on the, on the market size, the market size of gallium nitride already for last two years is, 
is second after silicon. So it, it develops faster than these semiconductors, which are known for a longer time. Uh, one can ask why this semiconductor came to industry so late. 50 years ago, it was already very well known that this is the material which has ideal properties for optoelectronics, ideal properties for high power, high frequency electronics. But the technology of this material was extremely difficult. And this was the main drawback which, which slowed down application. Uh, it is a very strongly bonded semiconductor with high melting temperature. But at high temperature, before melting, it decomposes. So for instance, it is impossible to use for this material Chokhalsky method because uh, we cannot melt it. And uh, actually, there is very little experiments which talk about this melting of these materials, or this material. This shows different uh, application of nitrides. Uh, starting from general lighting to a uh, very specialized, uh, specialized application of green and blue lasers. The author of the main breakthrough of technology, uh, of gallium nitride technology, was Shuji Nakamura, who succeeded in, in uh, 92 and then in 96 to produce efficient blue light emitting diode and blue laser. And as a substrate, he used sapphire. The gallium nitride was not available, so he used sapphire. And his material had a lot of dislocation, a lot of defects. And at this time, this was a really mystery why this material works, being so, having so poor crystalline quality. However, it worked. Now it's, less, it's better understood why it was working. Uh, but at this time, this was an uh, enormous achievement of, of, of Shuji Nakamura. And Professor Shuji Nakamura has been awarded Chokralski Medal here at the same place in 2007. Uh, however, already at this time, it was known that if gallium nitride crystals would be grown, would be available, this technology, gallium nitride technology, would become much easier and more efficient. Everything would be more efficient, especially for lasers. At this time, we had already a quite uh, good knowledge about basic thermodynamical properties of gallium nitride. We knew its equilibrium curve, equilibrium pressure of nitrogen over, over, uh, over gallium nitride in the function of temperature. And this part of the, of the picture, that's the part where gallium nitride is stable. Here, it dissociates into gallium and nitrogen. And at this time, we also knew that there is a region here, which is marked with these red lines, at which we can grow single crystals of gallium nitride from solution of nitrogen in gallium. And at this time, the te techno uh, high pressure technique in the Institute was developed to this point that we knew that such process is, is, is quite feasible. So uh, at this time, we, uh, at, at, at the time when, uh, when uh, first, first diodes have been produced, we uh, started very intense, very intense work on the development of single crystals of GAN and, and, uh, and also substrates from GAN. This was also shown, so I will maybe only br briefly show that 
This picture shows the main idea of the process. So uh, nitrogen under high pressure and, and, high, and, uh, uh, and high temperature dissociates, diffuses from the hot end of the crucible to the cold end, and, and crystal is grown here. That's the equipment which was already shown by Professor, by Professor uh, Kossut. And this is one of the first crystals which were already good enough for using it as a substrate for homoepitaxy. And when we checked the, the quality, we were really shocked uh, that uh, the, the concentration of this location was six order of magnitude lower than this which was available on sapphire, on sapphire uh, technology. Uh, this was a very strong motivation for us to develop uh, laser diode physics and technology in the institute. And uh, first, homoepitaxial layers, which were grown uh, on these substrates, they showed immediately enormous improvement. Uh, the morphology was atomically flat with straight atomic steps. Um, X-ray rocking curves were extremely narrow. Exciton structures were very well, resol very well resolved, and lines had uh, widths below one uh, electron volt, so at least one order, more than one order of magnitude better than this was the typical for sapphire technology. Uh, first laser was made in 2001 on such crystal. Uh, and in two, 2004, uh, this, uh, we made a laser which was made by other technique, uh, not by MOVPE, which was the standard at this time. We, we used the plasma-assisted MBE, and that's a kind of speciality we, which we continue uh, up to now. We, we, uh, we produce, we produce uh, uh, lasers. We, we are, we, we can make lasers both with this technology and also with this technology. At the beginning, everything was made on such irregular substrates, but slowly technology developed, and our pressure-grown crystals now and substrates are regular. It, uh, the, the method is developed by, by the crystallization laboratory, led by uh, by, by Professor Isaac Zegori, uh, the, uh, the technology is, is called uh, fit seat method. Uh, anyway, we were able to get up to two inches, up to two inches uh, uh, substrates which look like that. This is the laboratory which developed the technology of laser in our institute. Um, they have several world records uh, if you uh, relate it to the properties of, of uh, epitaxial layers, uh, quantum structures, and also devices. And uh, the main advantage, competitive advantage, which they have uh, in comparison with other laboratories or, is first fact that they have access to best quality substrates, which are either produced uh, by uh, technology which was developed in our institute, or they are produced by other technology by company Amono, which is also in Poland. That's also a Polish company which produces a very high quality substrate for gallium nitride. And the other advantage, competitive advantage of this laboratory is uh, the possibility of using in the same time two technologies, MOVPE and MBE. This, these two technologies complement each other, and the res we, if we can, in some, for some problems, uh, the use of these two technologies together is extremely useful. That's the, uh, that's the company 
which uh, commercializes the, the technology developed in the laboratory which I just showed. And I would like also to, to attract your attention. That's a list of technology which they, which they commercialized. And that's the last point, is this a large area, large arrays with 16 emitters and the power of, of such, uh, of such uh, laser is already 4 watt, which is uh, optical power is 4 watt, and that's already sufficient for, uh, for laser projectors, for big cinema projectors. Okay, and, and now uh, I'm coming to the third point. Uh, you see the, uh, the development of uh, gallium technology uh, is, is extremely quick. Uh, uh, the market develops fast. However, physics of gallium nitride is, uh, if, you, if you compare it with with uh, understanding of physics of others, 3-5 compounds, like for instance gallium arsenide, our understanding of physics of gallium nitride is much lower. We are far behind. And among the problems which are not well understood is melting. Uh, there are several controversies about the melting and its dependence, uh, the pressure dependence of, of melting temperature. There are two theories. One expects uh, that the melting will, uh, that the temperature of melting would, would go down with pressure. The other expects completely different results that the, that the, that the melting temperature will increase. And there's also one report which uh, it was reported that that the melting was observed at these conditions. This, are, this experimental picture which shows uh, sh these triangles which are shown here, that's, they, co they, they really, sh uh, it is reported that at these conditions melting of gallium nitride was observed. And uh, at this picture, we put all our information or, or, of about melting. So we have uh, Van Vechten theory. This was this first one. We, we have uh, molecular dynamics ca calculation by, by Harafui. The theories contradict each other. That's our equilibrium curve. And these are the data of, of Utsui. As you can see, the melting, which he observed here, confirms Van Vechten theory. And at this point, this result was accepted as a reference. In all publication, you find this, this data as a reference point for, for gallium nitride. However, we um, we extended the range of pressure and our results do not agree with Van Vechten theory and do not agree with this observation of Utsui. Utsumi. Uh, before I show this data, uh, I, I would like to say a few words about the general trends in, in melting. You see, there are People are, the different mater various materials are divided into two group, groups, usual and unusual. The usual, uh, this or this were uh, melting temperature increases with pressure, and that's a Simon Glatzel model from 1929, he, which, which describes this kind, kind of behavior. And there are unusual also. The water was the first example, very well known, where temperature of melting would decrease with pressure. But then there are other, other materials joined this group, groups, and then also was observed that, that actually these materials, which are shown here, they are members of the wider uh, group, which shows 
the maximum of melting. And this maximum of melting is related to the, to the uh, structural change in liquid. We have two types of liquid. We have low density liquid here and high density liquid here. And this, the change of the behavior under pressure is related to the change in liquid. That's the formula which, which explains this kind of, which, uh, which can be used to, uh, which can be used to, uh, to describe this kind of dependence. And it works for these materials very nicely. Uh, Van Vechten's theory did not include the possibility that there might be two liquids and there might be a change in, in, in the structure of liquid, local structure of liquid under pressure. But this theory, the theory of Harafui, molecular dynamic simulation for gallium nitride, they include this possibility. And uh, you see what's shown here, that's the interatomic potential which he uses in his calculations, which look very discouraging. You have four, five, five parts of this potential. Uh, they are listed here, Coval Coulomb interaction, Gilbert type, short range repulsion, covalent bonding, covalent repulsion, and van der Waals potential, and many constants. So it's, very, it's really very discouraging. However, many of these constants are obtained by ab initio calculations. And the other possibility to increase the re reliability of this method, it's comparison with, with experimental, uh, well, well established experimental values, and this was done, with this, this constant were, were adjusted by comparison with bulk modulus, phonon spectrum, global energy minimum configuration, formation energies for vacancies. And what I would really like to now to, to convince you that, that this theory, this uh, molecular dynamic theory, describes our data, which we obtain much better than, than this, which was accepted up to now, Van Vechten theory. The experimental work, the properties of GAN at pressures up to 9 gigapascals and 3,400 K, was done by our institute in very close collaboration with the Institute of Super Hard Materials from Kiev, from Ukraine. Uh, this institute is very famous for its, it's world famous for its work uh, in, uh, for, uh, for artificial diamonds for, uh, and also for his works on cubic, uh, cubic boron nitride. And their know-how was extremely uh, useful for this research. Uh, this here, these are two papers which we presented at IRAP conference recently in, in, uh, in, uh, in Seattle. And I will just briefly review, I will show what, what are the results of these publications. So, uh, the, we, to, to obtain this, uh, this pressure and te temperature, we used uh, toroid type apparatus in Kiev with uh, pressure chamber uh, 12 millimeters by 6 millimeters. It's a cylinder in which we put uh, gallium nitride single crystals and powder. Everything, the process was, uh, it was uh, annealed under pressure and high temperature at, uh, for 40 seconds. And the summary of the, of, the, of the results are shown here. These are these green points. And there were two types of, of, of results. Either, either uh, 
single crystals which were put in were left single crystals like here. This meant that there was no decomposition and no melting or the other points which are here. This after, uh, after the system was opened we, we have seen only gallium. So gallium nitrate was completely decomposed and this curve this data really extend our former, uh, former data quite well. Uh, this, this line, that's equilibrium line. And what was extremely interesting was that if we etched these samples, which are completely decomposed, we were getting such result that there were newly grown crystals which existed, which were, uh, which, which were inside gallium. And this were, they were crystals which were grown from solution of nitrogen in gallium during cooling the system. So measuring, measuring the weight of these crystals, we were able, and uh, uh, comparing it with, uh, with the weight of whole sample, we were able to measure solubility of nitrogen at, this, at conditions of the experiment. And this, this is shown here. We have two points. We have solubility for, for eight gigapascals and and nine gigapascals, and corresponding temperatures are three, uh, 3,100 and 3,400. Uh, from this data, from solubility, if we know liquidus curve, we can very easily found melting temperature. And this is shown here. This is the liquidus curve, which is in principle, you see, this, this, this two curves which are here, they are for gallium phosphide and gallium antimonide. So we assume that for gallium nitrite, this curve is similar. And from this, we can find, if we know the solubility, we can find the corresponding temperature. And this data are shown here, that for eight kilobars, at eight kilobars, melting temperature is three. Uh, it's three thousand six hundred for nine, three, three thousand seven hundred forty, and we have one more point, uh, which is based on theoretical calculation of solubility for twenty kilobars. These are these are uh, calculation made by Nord, and we can see that for 20 kilobars the melting temperature is 4,130. Uh, we put these three points here. These are the stars, and as you can see, this data conf confirm. Uh, Harafui theory, not. They are completely in complete disagreement with this. And we did one more thing. You see, we are uh, using this uh, uh, KD formula, which I showed already. Uh, this uh, RD, rain and demos formula. We extrapolated it further. And you can, you, you have. Uh, the, this diagram uh, here, you see, that's this. This are calculation by Van Vechten, and that's uh, Harafui molecular dynamics extrapolated data. These are our points. These are three points which are here. Uh, the maximum temperature corresponds to four times four thousand uh, four thousand 
250 and it's at 21 gigapascals. And for this kind of dependence, we know that at this part, at this pressures, we have the low density liquid and at this time, at, at, at here, we have high density liquid. How much time do I have? Have I have to finish or do I have five minutes? Okay. Uh, uh, so that's one mystery and you see this, this uh, theory is also able to, to predict other very anomalous dependence of gallium nitride. Uh, this, is, this is the picture which is shown which shows that the diffusion in different sublattices, in, in sublattice of nitrogen and gallium, is completely different. You see, the, uh, the uh, diffusion in nitrogen, in nitro, in nitrogen sublattice does not depend on, pre on temperature, up to melting. So this lattice is, the sublattice of nitrogen is completely uh, there's no, no vacancies which would be created in this sublattice. The vacancies are created only in gallium, in gallium sublattice. The authors were so surprised with this results that they uh, expressed doubts that it is so, diff so strange that maybe it is only a result of artifact due to some computer calculations. However, our data, which are shown here, show that uh, this, I will not go into details how this was measured, but anyway, our experimental data show that diffusion coefficients are extremely low, are even lower than for, for uh, for nitrogen sublattice. They are even lower than what was expected by the theory. So that's a, a very strong uh, argument that the theory really works also for, for this phenomena. And here we have conclusions, uh, general remarks, understanding of physics and technology of gallium nitrate is still far behind other 3,5 semiconductors like for instance gallium arsenide. Many years of research related to gun, to gun physics and technology is still before us. And I believe that the progress of physics of gun will prepare the background for new technological breakthroughs. And the mystery of, of gun melting, there are, uh, the conclusions are the following, that gun belongs to these unusual materials with maximum of on pressure dependence of melting temperature. And it is related to the structural change in liquid phase from low density liquid to high density liquid. The other uh, conclusion is that Van Vechten really underestimated the importance of short range covalent interaction and I assume that whole pressure, that in whole pressure range, liquid gallium is high density metallic liquid. And it seems that this was the mistake which he made. And the three, uh, information about the interatomic potential in gallium nitride is already so well established that molecular dynamic simulations is able to predict many new phenomena like this maximum or uh, this uh, self-diffusion anomaly, but I'm sure that there are much more effects which can be found by this type of simulations. Uh, people, at the, uh, when they see this potential with five parts, they are really discouraged and they don't believe that that, that this is a real effect, but I'm very convinced that this theory really works and it explains our data perfectly. Thank you.